My name is Vladimir Yarosh and I came from Veliki Novgorod, which is one of the oldest and one of the uh, beautiful uh, city in <coughs> Russia. It located between St. Petersburg and Moscow. It was my first trip coming here and I'm very impressed with the classes here because here I met so nice audience of people half of them are professional craftsmen and teacher at the school so it was impressive <clears throat> class for me uh, as a rule I come to United States to teach basket makers makers in basket guilds but this school is special one and I uh, really uh, like to come here to teach students uh, I had three days days class here and uh, each day was just unbelievable interesting for me. Hmm. Uh, I'm not tired uh, because I met people who understood me uh, immediately and uh, they made uh, each of them finished uh, a big number of baskets, three, four, even five for this three days. Also, I brought with me a small collection of my baskets. For example, this duck-shaped or bird-shaped container. In, in Russia, people use such containers for, keep, pick, for keeping in uh, dry mushrooms and dry berries. Ooh. And uh, in containers like this, bottle-shaped containers, people <coughs> help kept uh, grains like dry beans or seeds, uh, linen seeds uh, from which they made uh, oil or cook well, vegetable oil. Well, so, so Vladimir, they, the reason they're using birch bark is it's, a, it's the best material. Is it waterproof? How, how, why is it they're using birch bark instead of clay or, or other basket materials? There are a few reasons because uh, birch bark crafting is uh, very traditional for my country. We have a lots of birch trees everywhere across the whole country. This is the one reason. The th second one is uh, to study traditional culture and to support it. Uh, by my opinion, uh, citizen people needs to study how to weave something with their hands. So that is why I began uh, to uh, learn these unique uh, crafts and uh, in a few years I began to teach people how to do that. And uh, take a look at my shoes. It's high boots, very traditional for Russia. I wove these uh, high boots, studied how to do that uh, from samples in our museum. Uh, even after the Second World War, people in our villages used uh, such uh, high boots because it was difficult for them uh, to find uh, leather uh, shoes uh, and so so in all period for example in 19th century such a kind uh, of shoes were very usable because leather uh, shoes were very expensive for them can you imagine that for one pair of leather shoes you can buy 70 uh, shoes like this one well now Seven those are water one. those are waterproof it's not waterproof uh, so, uh, uh, under wearing this uh, in uh, winter period or during rain, you have come back home and dry your leg, uh, feet and uh, shoes. How long would they last? Like two or three years? or? No, it's not very long usable uh, uh, shoes. It lasts about 10 or little more days. But if you use it carefully, it can last maybe a couple of months, not more. Oh, okay. But, uh, can you, you have to know also that uh, in summer period, people in villages uh, don't use uh, shoes uh, um, at all. They just uh, travel without shoes. It, uh, it, so they uh, uh, put them on uh, in winter or spring and uh, autumn, fall period. Okay, that's really interesting. How long does it take to make them? Uh, for me, it takes about a couple days to, to make one. That. Yes, mm -hmm. because you have to harvest material to prepare it and to weave the high boots. So it is uh, not uh, easy and, and it takes time. So 
uh, Fred is one of my students in the school. He is a teacher at school, also instructor. But he is admired with the birch bark weaving. Originally, he is a uh, wood cover, wood cover, yeah. and uh, he likes to uh, cut to cut uh, spoons of wood, different kinds of wood. But today he is my student, and he does very good job. He is going to finish this basket, five cornered basket. Let's which see. Is Let, I'm going to look. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So oh, he's got five corners. I yeah. hope he will be successful to finish it today, <laughs> just in a half an hour, maybe. <laughs> I will. I'll finish it. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's watch you do this for a oh, second. It's about, uh, oh. me about as yeah. a teacher and something like So that. you're sort of weaving birch bark. It's, oh it's, yeah. And uh, I only know the this is not something I'm used to doing this type of weaving. So this is new to me. And uh, Vladimir's Vladimir's work takes birch bark weaving that we've learned here at North House as teachers to a whole different level. It's uh and he's a very good teacher, so he's been doing this a while. So it's, and I've learned a huge amount from doing these baskets. So, well, now is that a spe birch bark? Birch bark is it prepared in a special way so it's all even in thickness and stuff? Do you tear it off, or how do you prepare that? Well, I know he he cut it off the tree, a mm -hmm. living tree, and then he prepares it by he calls it cleaning. And then it's stripped to a certain layer. So the outside layers are, um, the white bark on the outside is taken off. And then these are the inner layers. And he brings these all the way from Russia. So this bark is different than what we have here. Does it feel different? Yeah. I, it not, it's not that it feels different. It's just that it's... Um, it's thinner. We have, in Minnesota, we have bark that's thicker. Yeah. And so we have to split it uh, much more so than he does. Hmm. So, so I'm doing, I'm just weaving up the sides of the basket. So I'm going up the sides. And then you weave beyond that, he taught us, to tighten the basket. Then you back weave it and then add the saw tooth. And then... These uh, curls will be added last. So, but it's, uh, we made, some of the students made six projects, I think. Wow. And uh, I didn't because I was helping out, so. Well, it seems to me there, this birch bark, it almost seems to have an inner light, doesn't it? It does. And uh, actually, when it's, uh, we were thinking that these, this particular basket, if it were bigger, would make a wonderful lampshade. <laughs> you know, for one of these little welcome lights that you see in Scandinavia. <laughs> so, we'll see. That's, I, I'm thinking I might do something like that with my basket. 